afternoon everybody Kathy Arbor here and today is Thursday paint along um, I think I have I think the link let me check yes it did okay there's a link in the description below and if you want to paint along with me feel free to download that traceable and you can paint along and make it whatever size you want. Um, this is actually a pattern from a Christmas book, but I thought it was fitting <laughs> for this time of year. It's from this book by Jamie Mills Price, and you're allowed to use these printables, but do not sell them. They are not for refit, resale. Um, this is the little guy we're going to be doing right here. So it's uh, to the North Pole quick because it's he's melting. <laughs> so if I hopefully um, Texas is melting the snow away. I see you got quite a bit of unexpected weather there. We have still a mountain of snow here, but hopefully it will be gone soon. So this is the size you will get, and it's meant for a little piece of wood, but what I'm going to do is make this as a kind of a belly band for my, um, this was February file folder. So that's what we did last week and there is a downloadable for that also but it's for the members. And if you um, would like all of the traceables that I've done in the past uh, eight months I think it is now and um, more of a detailed class for it you're more than welcome to uh, join the membership and uh, download all those traceables. They can be found either on my my uh, main page. You'll see members videos and it'll show you all of those. Hi Lori, good to see you. Uh, looks like my picture is a little bit dark. I'm just going to see if I can... Brighten that up a little bit. There we go, a little better. Hey Kim, Tori. <laughs> Tori, I see you popped in when I first came on. I was just testing my camera to see. Every time I turn this uh, new um, cam link on, there's something new. <laughs> so I wanted to see, make sure I was coming on right. The printable is cute. Yeah, it is. Um, that's free for today. If you want the other ones that I've been doing uh, on the membership, you can join. It's only $2.99 a month, and you get to download as many as you want. And they're for your own personal use. So I thought this was kind of cool as a little... He's all starting to fall apart. He's melting. It says to North Pole quick. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Get this weather out of here. So is the sound okay for you guys? You're not having any problems? Hey Devin!
So what I'm going to do is put this on an existing piece of um, manila holder. And then I can use this as a belly band. And I think I'm just going to put it down. I think I might just actually, I'm feeling lazy today. Sound and picture is fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. I think I just might just put this on. as it is and not bother with the tracing of it. And then just paint over top of it. So I'm just gonna match up the edge a little bit. Let's see, I'm gonna cut this first. Make sure it's lined up good. So I'm going to be lazy. So I can actually just go on like that and then I'll just paint around it. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's cut that out then. I'll glue that on and maybe cut it out. So matte medium. Oh darn, I forgot to get that. Okay. I'll just use some of this. Upstairs. Not lazy, efficient. <laughs> I like your way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, why not? Now, the only, I would take two, a couple copies of it because in case you want to paint the whole background first. You might want to do that. Throw that on there. Get all the air bubbles out of it. You can use a credit card or whatever you have. Get rid of that now. Oh no, I need this. Well, let's get this out of the way for now. going to cut this out. So feel free to get your downloadable there and paint along with me. Alright. 
I'm going to put a little bit on the top here too, just to keep it sealed. Try not to go, if you're using a jet print, don't go over it too many times because it will run. Mine's pretty good. It's a um, Epson Artisan and the ink is pretty good on it. Doesn't very, doesn't uh, tend to bleed too much, which is good. I know a lot of different ones bleed differently, so kind of have to play with them sometimes. Or you could spray it with a fixative and then uh, put the matte medium on it. So I'm going to dry that. Yeah, I got to watch Dee and Janet a little bit while I was cleaning my room up here. That yeah, was funny. It's, it's so cool to see the two different styles. Um, <laughs> just watching both of them. Uh, I think that if I did it, I would be more inclined to be <laughs> like Janet. I'm very, um, I love details. So, and I probably couldn't do 20 myself. I don't like to rush, so I'm not that much of a fan of that JD5s, but everybody's different. I like to relax and just take my time and enjoy it, <laughs> not to be stressed. <laughs> For me, art is supposed to be de-stressing, not stressing. <laughs> Maris. Let's see who I got in here. Got any mods yet? Oh, there she is, Janet. There's a traceable for you, Janet, if you want to play along. It's in the description. I'm being lazy today or I should say efficient, as <laughs> Yolanda says. I, I actually just that <laughs> medium the guy instead of tracing him. I'm just going to paint right over top of the paper. loved your stream. It was fun. I watched a little bit of it. Couldn't watch all of it, but I watched most of it. It was cool. I was just saying I was, I'd was i be more like you. <laughs> I can't just go crazy. I, I'm too much detail oriented. <laughs> it freaks me out. <laughs> I like to think about things. This up. Did 
she might give me think you will do any fun projects with this exactly the last Stress. It is. It's stressful. <laughs> I was stressed just watching. <laughs> okay, so this little guy, here's what he looks like. Uh, can you see it? It's not too blurry. Kind of hard to see. I might have to lower my light. It was too dark for a minute there. Just seeing if I can change my light a little bit, just so that it's not as maybe that's nope. Maybe I should need to turn off my head over here. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's a little better. I think. you could put it on something if you want to do an outline on it. I think I might do like a black and white outline. Um, I'm just going to do probably something very light as a background. Just a wash of mm, maybe cream or blue. Let's see. I got azure blue here. Now it seems too dark. Uh, that better or Some of that on and I'm just going to do a really watery mix. Some paper towels. So I'm just going to put a like a glaze over top just to color my background so I'll still be able to see make it streaky that way it looks kind of looks like clouds in a way and maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to the bottom area where or actually no I'm gonna add green or a yellow, little yellow maybe so it looks like um, grass because it wouldn't be snow we just have little patches Just a little bit of yellow to that, and then we'll change the color. And I can go over this with a bit of a little bit of darker in there. There.
Is that too dark for you guys? What you're seeing on your screen, I can lighten it. Is that better? Okay, so I want to dry that because I don't want this to get really sopping wet. another container here out. Take some of that dried stuff off. This is just dried paint. Alright. Now this little snowman guy is going to be um, kind of on the cream side. So I've got, I'm just going to use again craft paint. I like using craft paint in my journals or experimenting pieces. A little bit of white. And I have some blue and yellow. I think I'll do the snowman first. So I'm going to get a fairly small brush because this is a fairly small pattern. So if you can find um, a round or a very, very, very small angle would be good. There's one there. So something like this or, or a fairly small round like this one would work. This is a number five. They're all different though. You really can't um, count on the size because every manufacturer has a different size. So um, right now I want to just do a little bit of this. What color was this? This was called buttercream. And I'm just going to paint around this little guy. Maybe, I think I'm going to use the round. And this one's going to be a little bit more fussy painting. And I'm going right over the black line. You could do this for coloring book pages too, if you wanted to use a color book page in your journals. It would be a great idea. You just don't have to use colored pencils. You can use uh, paint too. I know I have a ton of different color books. So why not use them up instead of having them sit on your shelf? I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of coloring 
it does take a while to color a page. It, at least it does for me. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I'm fussy. I just uh, that's just what I like. I really love detail, so I get caught up in that. But I enjoy it, so it's not a bad thing for me. Some people like to do it a more of a loose painting or um, coloring. Not me. I'm just going to leave where his eyes and his eyebrows are. I can go back in with um, marker or a black color pencil or a real fine liner would, would also work. This is just the quick way of doing it without having to trace. But you can go ahead and trace if you want to do that. That's up to you. But you can just lay your paper down. And do a fairly thick amount of paint. I don't want to see the ba that blue background. It can be a little bit because he is melting after all. <laughs> see there's some little drops of snow on his head here. And I might just go in with colored pencil today to do all the detail. That might be fun. What do you guys think? Colored pencil or marker as the detail? So this is kind of the way you would do a pencil drawing in the coloring book is you, you color all around everything. So as you can see, you can do the same thing with your paint. It's a good way of, of practicing um, fine detail with a paintbrush too. Just don't have too much coffee. I had too much coffee this morning. <laughs> My hands are a little shaky. So I'm just putting in a nice thick amount of a base coat. And this uh, craft paint also has a tooth. So I can go over top of it with my colored pencil. No problem at all. See in chat people talking about the scavenger hunt. If you're watching the recording, that's Janet Young's um, challenge that she put out on New Year's Eve, and it, I think it goes till is it 30th of April or is it the beginning of April, Janet? So you can still have time to do it. There's a hundred prompts you have to do. Check out Janet's channel. Devin's here too. She's got a fantastic channel. Mixed media.
you're washing your stencils, Janet. <laughs> I'll show you um, <laughs> a little bird I did the other day for the Budding Artists and Up membership. Turned out really cute. I think I'm going to use it as a journal cover. So I'm going to sew it on the sewing machine to make a, a slip cover for one of my journals. It really turned out cute. I actually did some stitching on it. It was a little bit of a pain doing the stitching, but I'll show you in a minute. Just let me get this snowman guy done. Hey, Jill. Good to see you. How's the weather there, Joan? I keep thinking about the UK. They usually start their uh, gardening season right about now with their beautiful spring flowers coming up. Or has the weather been kind of crazy there too? I have a bit of a lag today on the chat. But we'll work with it. Just glad I can come on and my computer seems to be working well now. Well, it's a new one that I'm using in my room. It's been milder this last couple of weeks. Oh, awesome. So imagine all your bulbs and stuff are all starting to peek through. That would be so nice to see. I still have two feet of snow on the ground. We don't. I. I don't. I can't even see the road yet. <laughs> but we're supposed to get above freezing for on and off for the next two weeks. So it, during the day, not at night, but during the day. So. Yay! This is why I thought of doing this guy. You're cute, but you gotta go back to the North Pole. I'm tired of you. I imagine the grocery stores would probably start having the um, crocus, primula, that type of thing in pots for you to buy. I always love that. I always buy them and then you can plant them in your garden afterwards. So don't throw them out. You could even put them in grass. Because they especially crocuses, they're so early, your grass doesn't grow enough. Oh, that's not part of that. I feel for you, Gabby. Yes. Yeah. We didn't have a thaw, so it just, every, every time it snowed, it just stayed. Usually we have a January thaw. We didn't get one this year, so that's why there's so much snow. just 
if you're painting along just do your base coat I'm not gonna be too worried see how kind of um, streaky he looks so that'll kind of go good with the melting look too so <laughs> don't worry about it too much being really really uh, opaque especially if you put some of that blue in it'll work with the, the melting effect <laughs> yes hubs has filled quite a few hanging baskets up with them oh awesome that'll look pretty Colorado got 11 to 14 inches oh yuck I feel for you I know I'm like you know <laughs> you know the old saying when um, March comes in like a lamb it'll go out like a lion <laughs> I'm kind of worried about that one because so far I think it's coming in like a lamb And it did that last year, and we ended up getting a huge freeze, like a really deep freeze in June. And it, well, it just made all my hostas and um, anything that was up early, it just froze and made them into mush. So I'm hoping it didn't kill my hostas last year. But we'll see. So, do any of you have your folders for the, playing along with me in the um, folder a month, art folder a month? This is February, so you could still catch up. Uh, I'm still working on January too. It's been a kind of a busy time here for me doing stuff on classes and whatnot, taking up my time, thinking up things to do. Yeah, I know. It was, it was so depressing getting a big freeze in June. Blech. So depressing. Very rarely does that happen. Because we can usually count on putting vegetables in on the May 2 4 weekend. But yeah, luckily I, I had postponed it. I didn't put mine in because it had been so cold. It was a really rotten year yet last year for vegetables too um, and all over at least in Canada a lot of people mentioned that their vegetable gardens didn't produce as much as they should have so I'm not quite sure why but I know they are saying that the solar cycle is has a lot to do with it and I guess we're in the um, the low end cycle we just started it so things could be kind of yucky not as much um, light like intense light for the plants don't know. I think I got all these all the little things. Guess there's a few here. Little bits falling off. Mm. On his head. A little bit more on his head.
from there, I guess. Cause he's melted. Okay. Guy, little guy is all done there. We started folder project in January, worked on February, and now awesome. I've heard of it. Uh, didn't bother with any vegetable gardens last summer. Um, I had a few tomatoes. Yeah, we had. I had um, a fair amount of the little cherry tomatoes, but my other tomatoes were crap. They were really bad, and hardly any carrots. The beans weren't bad, but anything that took time, like carrots, tomatoes, melons, that type of thing, peppers, hardly got anything worthwhile. And a lot of people found that. I don't know. So I hope I hope that's not the case because the the uh, loon or the the sun cycle is seven years. <laughs> so that's not good. Okay, so we got that guy done. Um, the little wagon here, I think I'm going, they, he's, they've got it in blue, but I love the little red wagons. <laughs> I think I'm going to do mine in red. And I've got a tomato red here. And I'm just going to go right over the print. So I can just print that back on with black marker or something. So I'm just going to go under here. I guess I can use a bigger one while I'm at this part. Just to get it done. Well, I could just, yeah, it just still shows through. Red, yellow, orange, they tend to be a little bit transparent. So that kind of works for me in this case, because then I can still see my lettering. And where the shadows are, little speckles on the traceable, you'll see speckles. That's the uh, shading areas and little hearts will do the same. So it's a cute little drawing, I thought. And Got that green and yellow here. I think I'm just going to fill in the trees with that. Take the water off my brush. Nice bright green. Now if you want it a little more on the... See this is a fairly bright green. If you want to dull that down, just add a little bit of red. Whatever color you're going to be painting with, if you don't like it real bright, add the opposite color in the color wheel. And then that'll darken it or gray it down, they say. So let's put these trees. Um, I'm just going to paint the whole thing. And then I can go back in and do all the highlights and the shadows later. And I think because this is so, it's not a very big picture, I'm just gonna use colored pencils to do all my 
shadows and highlights and it's quick. It's another way of doing stuff. While I'm at it, I got that green, I can do the leaves. So I think I'll add a little bit of light cream with it and I'm just gonna just flick these leaves. Do you want me to go in a little bit? Let's see. bit so you can see so I'm just gonna paint some leaves on the, these guys so press your brush down and and put it up, down, up, down, up. So the same way you would do watercolor leaves. A lot of the strokes that I teach in the watercolors on Tuesdays you can apply to the acrylic painting. Do in here. I thought he was cute. Um, let's see. I think that's all I needed in the green. Oh, and then the little. Well, I guess I should do the inside of the wheels first. He's got a. He's getting a greenhouse, Joan. Oh, I'm envious. I would love a greenhouse. I would, I would. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of brown, so burnt umber, for his limbs. Just gonna put some over here. And I'm gonna just um, put a little bit of a light, of that creamy color in it. Just want it a little bit lighter. And kind of a mid-tone trees and his little arms. Oh, I missed some trees. Let's see, this one here. There's some limbs going over his arms, but you can put those in after. 
fairly small anyway, so don't worry too much about it. Um, I think I'm going to put that little birdhouse, I'm going to add a little red to that and make it on the red side so it doesn't compete with his arm. And then I can put the, the roof in a little bit lighter. Nice brown, maybe. A little bit of remember, we're going to do all the highlighting and shading in, in colored pencil. So I think I will put in the vine here in a medium color. Can you see it? And, oh, a little twig here. It's on his head. The bird. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that red mix so it's a little on the orange side. And I'm going to fill in this wheel. around the heart. I'll just paint the leaves back in. It's easier. So what are your plans for the spring? Anybody got gardening plans? I'm not sure if I'm going to put a whole lot of vegetables in this year. I might put, I like beans, that type of thing. Maybe a few cherry tomatoes for salad and beets maybe. I like beets. Awesome. Marion, welcome to the group. Be sure to check out the community page. That's where all the um, downloadables are. Okay, and that, this is another little house. I think I'm going to do it more in the beigey side of things. So I'll just do it all in one color and we'll go back and make it however we want design wise. Just put your basic coat of paint in. You kind of you kind of look for the mid-tone when you're doing a base coat, at least I do. And then you can either lighten parts or darken parts. So look at your reference photo when you're doing a, it from a reference photo 
of what is the most dominant mid color and use that. Not sure what kind of birdhouse this is, but it's round. Could be a, one of those gourds. Thanks, Joan. Hubs ha what has ordered lots of garden plants. Just waiting for them to turn up. Garden will be full of color again. It's awesome. What kind of garden plants? Perennials? That's my favorite. I love perennials. Last year I... Um, I've got a bunch of seeds from different people um, before, I guess in 2019, I ordered a whole bunch of different perennial seeds from all over the world. And uh, the one I got that was uh, my favorite is Delphiniums. And I got them from New Zealand, <laughs> a special place that um, grows them. Oh, I can't wait this year. They all came up. I put them in pots, and then I put them in, buried them in my vegetable garden in pots so I can move them when I want. Oh, I love delphiniums. That's one of my favorites. I just have to watch the bunnies don't eat them. Because... <laughs> drives me crazy. I noticed they ate my my beautiful climbing rose. I, I, and I had even put um, a wire around the two feet high, but the, the darn snow went over that. Now they ate that above the two foot section. Like, oh, I can't win. Little buggers. I'm going to attempt growing flowers again this year. Last year was an epic fail. I'm not good at gardening, but I love flowers. You just have to keep trying. That's pretty well with anything. You're going to have your fails and, and your successes, and you learn from your fails. Like, I've been gardening for 40 years, and I had a lot of fails through my years. And it's all, you know, don't. I can tell you one thing that I learned the hard way. Do not skimp on your soil. If you have a lot of sand in your soil, beef it up. It's not worth the aggravation of trying to get those plants to grow in, in soil that's got a lot of sand. And the same with um, clay. If you have a lot of clay, Beef it up with organic matter and work it in deep. Now, I personally love to do the no-dig method when I'm digging out my garden beds, but I top it up with two feet of, of soil. That's good soil. And you'll never, you'll never uh, be disappointed if you do the soil the first time. You can't keep, can't, eh. just have to try, keep trying. If you love, if you really love something enough, you'll keep at it until you get it right. Yeah, I'll see what the roses are like. It's a, it's a fairly uh, fast growing rose, so that's one good thing. Yeah, little darn bunnies. That's the problem with living in a a rural area. You got the wildlife. And the bunnies are sneaky little buggers. Squirrels are can be a real nuisance too. They love to to. Um, they like to wait till you're 
um, spring bulbs are just starting to bloom. Just, just about to open. <laughs> and then they go around, nip, nip. They don't even eat the buds. They just nip them and let them fall. Like it'd be one thing if they, you know, were eating them, but <laughs> they waste. They just like to get you mad, I, I swear. I had a bunch of tulips they did that. I had tons of tulips. And then the next day I went out and they were all laying on the ground, all the buds. So, you know, those are some of the things you learn as you as you do gardening too, is what do the bunnies leave alone? Now I'm lucky here, I don't have deer. At least I've never seen any. Um, they don't come into town. It's just a small town. There's no more than 1,500 people in town here. So I've never seen one around. But you learn what animals like and dislike, and then you just have to do what you can to protect the ones that they do like. But I no longer put tulips in anymore. Plus, they don't seem to come up that great the, the, after, what, the second year. So I just stick to um, hyacinths and daffodils. Um, what other? Um, I got a really cool blue flower that comes up. A huge spike of blue flowers. It's not um, bluebells. Starts with the C. I can't think of it now. Casmia, I think it's called. It's full of wild birds all day. Awesome. Okay, no problem, Tori. All right, so I'm going to paint in these little bits of snow. Uh, here's some here. So if you kind of went over them a little bit, just touch them up now. Um, there was snow in here. They're dropping down here. I saw too that my favorite gardening show, Monty isn't coming back. He's taking a break. That was kind of sad to see, although he is, what, 70? <laughs> I probably want to do my own thing too. That was a great show. I loved watching it. I would, that would be my dream come true is to be able to go to all those gorgeous gardens that he shows in the castles and those big estates that were beautiful gardens. They spent millions and millions a hundred years ago. Oh, I'd love to see that. I'd be in my glory. If I lived in the UK, that's where I would be every day. <laughs> Looking through these gardens. Seeing how big stuff grow there. Like your magnolias. Oh my God. I saw that in some heath. Oh, was it? Um... I can't remember the places, but this guy was talking about they have the biggest um, collection of magnolias, and they showed this one that is 50 feet tall, 
and the the size of the blooms was as big as his head. I couldn't believe it. I thought, holy jeez. There. I love ground going around our state and home. Yeah. Oh. Some of the some of the oh, just beautiful. I saw one the other day of um, Prince Philip's place. That was amazing. Okay, so see, you just start to do these and sooner or later they, it gets all done. Well, I missed a little green area here, so we'll mix up a little more of that green. Maybe we'll do these bright. Houses right here. And the bird, I think I'll do him blue. Maybe we'll do a little blue bird. Add a little bit of brown to that. I don't want bright, bright blue. But do a little bluebird. Although he's on a black background. Hmm. Well, I guess it'll work. It can be whatever you want. You could make a something made up if you wanted to. A little red heart on the flag. I think it's a, an American flag, but I think I'll just do it in white. White and I don't know, green maybe. Or white and some color that I've, I'm using in this picture here. I'm gonna put some white around the heart. And I think I got it all. Now this um, underneath here well, I could probably do that in um, a nice pencil crayon. I think I have everything. Maybe some yellow in his beak. Although I could do that in a colored pencil. And his nose, so I can do that color pencil. All right, so I think that's it for the paint. So I'll just put these aside in case I need them. And I'll get my colored pencils out. Pencils. This is just a mix, mishmash. I'll just put them over here on the side. All right. Now make sure that it's good and dry. You don't want to try and put colored pencil on it when it's damp. Hey, she spends. Good to see you.
We have a nice sunny day here today, so that's good. It's supposed to go to plus four. That's Celsius here. Tomorrow. Yay! flat a little bit. All right. So we can start off with some white. And just where the highlights on the little faces so he'd have highlights up here. I don't know if it's going to show that much, but I might have to use marker. His cheeks. Yeah, maybe I'm going to use what, a bit of marker. If I can find one. Mm. Maybe not. Upstairs. I'll use a sharpie, maybe. That's an oil. Huh? Did I? Even, I think I left all my markers upstairs. This one. Hmm. Well, maybe I will have to do a bit of white painting got my marker. If you have a white marker, use that. But I don't, so I'm going to have to use a little bit of white paint. So just in the highlighted areas, so around his cheeks on the head, would be a little bit whiter. His cheeks. And any of the little globs of uh, melting snow, put a little bit of white on the ends where it's falling. It just makes it look a little bit like an high, a highlight. Um, so here. You don't have to do them all, but just where they're kind of falling down. And then we'll do a little bit of shading underneath them. Shading I can do with a colored pencil. So it's, I got it fairly thick. So just make sure you put enough on so that you can see it. I want a fair amount of highlight on his head. There. His cheeks. Um, I'm going around our state room. Oh, I've already, already read that. So is anybody doing this with me or are you going to do it later? I thought it was cute. I don't normally see a painting of a snowman melting. <laughs>
So I'm just dabbing. Just dab on the bottoms of those melted areas. Just highlight them a little bit. It's cute. And then on the snow on the bottom, you put put it on the top parts. So it kind of looks like it's puddles of snow. It's not really soft looking because it it's kind of falling off things. So it would be a little more um, rougher looking. It's fun. There. A little bit of pawn and flag here. I think that's it. You can add as much as you want to. You want to put more in, put more in. Okay. Now let's put some hot, um, low lights or shading areas. So let's dry it first, make sure. And I'm going to put his little nose in. Put just some orange. And I'm going to use a little bit of blue in the shaded areas. So we're just going to, underneath where his uh, head would be, I just very lightly, just go around that, just slightly. So it looks like it's uh, shaded. Oh. Hey. And then around his eyes too. So they would be kind of set in a little bit. So just just a little bit around the eye. Because he's melting, so things are starting to go a little wonky. And under his nose, he's got a little cheek here. You could also um, go a little bit under that cheek and around the mouth. And then the head itself, just do a little bit, a very, very light touch though, just a little bit. I go in circles. It's just the slightest amount. And then where the little drops of snow are, you might see a little bit under those. Um, 
little bit more around here, little ch his little mouth I'm gonna, here, just a little bit, under this falling snow, little drips of snow coming down, really more watery, put some of those in. And then just do the same thing. Wherever you see those drips, just do a light coat of this blue. Well, this one is, um, it's Caran d'Ache Pablo's. And it's uh, Blue Jean. So any blue, really. Kind of a medium sky blue color. I'm going to put some under his arm here, just so it's a little bit shaded. So wherever you have that white meeting the cream color, you can just add just a very light amount of blue under it. So that's the shadow of that snow falling. Along the side too, um, just to give them a little bit of dimension. I'm going to put some in here where the tree is too it would be shadowing his body a little bit. Put it on both sides. And around the little top here. And under the little limb of his arm, let's put some in there. They would be sticking in the snow, that limb. So it'd be a little darker under there. It does make a big difference. Play with it. I still have some of that those black lines showing underneath there, so I think I'm gonna leave that because it kind of looks like the um, the real darkest darks in there. And you could do it though instead of blue you can use like um, a medium purple would work a gray mauve Just follow all those little I'm gonna put fairly dark in here under the trees. All right, and then just have a few in here. And I can go on top of that white paint still with this color. So 
along the grass line, it'd probably be a little bit bluer. Little shaded areas. I got them all. A little bit up here. I think that's it. I'm just going to put some along the very side here of his body. So it kind of looks more dimensional. I get all of these. They would be a little bit more shading on the sides here because it's turned away from you. Maybe in here. I'm just going to color the background here a little bit where those dots are on your, your pattern just to give a little bit of shadowed dark areas. You don't have to get too dark with it, but just here and there. Just gives it a little more dimension, a look to it. I'm still using the same blue. Let's see under here. Lightly, just very lightly. And then under here, even though that's green, I'm going to just use this blue. So it will match well with the green to give this a little bit of um, shadowed effect underneath the wagon. There. And my little bird just going to use the same blue. Wherever those speckles are, put that darker blue in. That'll give them a little bit of dimension. Um, let's see. Just 
do the limbs. I'm going to use, let's see what I got here. Uh, darker brown. Let's see if this will work. And I'm just going to do some lines. So it looks like bark over top of that lighter area. Maybe on the inside where the shadow would be, you can put some darker um, outlines in there. So I'm assuming the, sh the um, sun is shining down on them. You can, I'm going to do this too. Just with a line, a little rope. And I need a little bit darker for his arms. Let's see. It's dark. Hmm. Black. I'm just going to do the black. Again, it's just a bit of streaks, marks on it so it kind of looks like wood. Uh, put it in his little eyebrows. They're dark. I want his eyes good and dark too. And his mouth. And this twine, or I don't know what it is. It's a vine, I think. I think it's supposed to be twining around his arm and stuff. You can put a little bit more of that in so it's a little darker. And I'm going to shade just along the bottom edge of it just a bit to add a little bit of shadowing underneath here. Just a bit. And I need a light color. Maybe a light gray will do. And I'm just going to add a highlight on the top. So, and that's it for that. Thanks, Joan. This little tree, too, we can get a lighter green. So, let's see what green we have here. Mm. That might work, and we'll. I'm just gonna shade this, go in a circle, and make it thinner as I go up. But you're kind of leaving a little bit of that shadow color on the sides. And you could do that with the leaves too. You could add just a little mark on the leaves just to give them a little something extra. It doesn't have to be a lot because they're very small, but it's kind of nice just to put a little bit of 
something in there. Just gives them a little bit more dimension. I'm going to put his little feet in there. I think he'll have tipped wings just to give him a little bit more. Maybe his tail is tipped. What else? Probably take a yellow or a white and even lighten this up in the center. Just right on the very center. And let's see. I'm going to make these darker. These lines here. I'm just going to go in a zigzag. So there's still a little bit of um, see through in it of the background. Just a bit. Just darkens it up, makes it a little nicer looking. And then Let's do a little bit of shading. I'm just going to use this black. You could use a dark brown. Um, purple would work on this. I'm just going to use this black and darken the area under the snow. Whatever's hanging off. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. Doesn't have to be a lot, but just a bit. Underneath. And then you can uh, write in that um, to the North Pole here. And I think I'm just going to darken that area. These little tree limbs. What else? This has to be done. Um, I think I'm going to do lines in it. Okay. Like that. And some brown. Oh, just so that it's shaded a little bit on each side. Maybe underneath a little bit. Because if it's round, I don't know. It'd be 
be darker in there around the snow. So you'll have a bit of shadows cast. Like that. And then I'm going to just take a white and go down the center. Like that. Thanks, guys. Maybe a little bit of highlight on this little guy's head. Highlight in here. And I'm going to highlight just in this area here. And I'm going to have to put my leaves back in. red or something a little brighter for the hearts. Get him just a smidgen brighter. And then highlight the little tops of the heart. And what else? Let's darken this a little bit in here and under here. I'm just going to put a little bit on the trees here, just a smidge. Darken that bird hole. And now we could put white on here if you wanted to. It's not a white white, but it might look cute. You could go back in and paint that if you wanted to. I'm missing a top part, but It's a good belly band. I'm going to go around the, the wheel a bit just to darken that area. Get 
dark in this area in here because it would be a little darker. Not quite as bright. <laughs> That's okay, Marion. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, what else can we do here? I'm going to put little... I guess I could actually put some white paint on that. Let's see. I'm just going to use my pencil. Put a dot. Paint. On there, I'm going to put a little dot in his eye. And maybe in there. I uh, just joined today. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> You're in the right spot. There's tons of videos. <laughs> Make sure you uh, look at all the downloads you can get for whatever level you are, you're on. There we go. So a little paint, a little colored pencil, and you got a cute little guy. Now, um, where did I put that? The way I'm going to put them in is he's going to sit in here and I'm just going to either add a piece of paper or I could actually use material, whatever you want. Um, and then he will hold any loose type of um, work that I have. So I can just fit it in there. So let's see, what do I have? I think it might be kind of cool to put some material on there. some old sheeting. Now I could even sew it on the sewing machine. That would look cute too. do I need? I think I could cut this again. Yep, it's about the same size. So Did it about there. The same for the top. And you could stain this if you wanted to, or tea or coffee to make it a little 
more vintage looking. If that's your thing you like to do. And let's see. I got my sewing machine over here. The other one, just a minute. I was too lazy to change the color of the thread, but you could do, could have done it in black or whatever. So I'll bring you out a little bit. Um, just did a bunch of stitching across there so then now I could fold it over and just glue it if I wanted to onto that so then it's it's um it's kind of got um what do you call it a little bit of a gusset so if you got a lot of papers that you're going to put in here, at least it wouldn't um, be too thick. So, oh, did I leave that? Um, just, I got to get my beacon, beacon glue. And I just put it on the, wait a minute, now it goes this way. Ooh, nearly made a mistake. If I can get this stuff down. I'll just put some of this fabric glue on. Oh, yeah, and I was going to show you the little bird. <laughs> it turned out really cute. So let me put this on, and then I'll show you. Make sure it's in the center the way I want it. Down. This beacon glue will hold pretty well anything. It's great for fabric. Okay. And down it goes. There. 
See, it's still got a little bit of give to it, so it's not too... <laughs> Thanks, Janet. So I got a little bit of fabric on there and sewing. <laughs> Everyone's into the sewing nowadays. You could actually do a bunch of sewing on the edge of this paper, too, if you wanted to. That would be really cute. Um, where did I put that? Brought it down. Or did I? I thought I did. Where did I put it? Did I put that thing? I know I brought it down. Maybe I didn't. Hmm. I must have left it upstairs. Oh well, you can see it on the um, Instagram. I have it on Instagram, the little <laughs> bird. I thought for sure I brought it down. Must have. Left it upstairs. So there's the little guy. Not into sewing. Well, eh. I've got my sewing machine set up here anyway, so I don't have to bring it out and put it back. So, And I don't sew clothes anymore or draperies or anything like I used to. <laughs> I used to do upholstering and everything else. I don't do that anymore. So I'm going to use my sewing machine for my crafts and art. So this way, we can take any uh, loose stuff. Like. Okay, so like, you know, jelly prints, that type of thing. We can just slide them in there because they'll fit. They should, yeah. And then it'll hold any loose stuff that I have. So that's my February folder. So I just have to put February on here. I've got some other loose stuff I haven't put it in yet. But it's a great little way of keeping your art together that you do each month. And um, for me, I do all kinds of different art in different um, journals and any painting that I do. I normally do it on loose um, substrates. And then you get, end up with this pile of loose papers <laughs> hanging around your don't know what to do with. So that's why I like to add a little belly band or whatever to your folders so you can put those loose papers away somewhere. And then you, after you, um, oh, I don't, oh yeah I do. After you finish six months or depending on how thick your folders are, then you can make one of these. So you just, I haven't finished this but then this is my last year's January folders up to June. So see the little folders in here? Little pockets. Places to put stuff. Another little pocket. There's a little place for notes. There's a little belly band on the bottom to hold things. A little place for notes, the belly band, different way of putting belly band on. <laughs> Our cute little fib, fibville. <laughs> More.
and that was June. So it's a great way of having stored your last year's art activities. So make sure you, you um, give this a try. I think you'll like it. And there's different ways of binding these books too. This is just with old cloth. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And then you have a little, you could also do some journaling in here to, to explain what you did and why you did it. And just have fun with it. It could be an all source little thing too where your ideas are kept instead of a great big bulky journal. Um, I, I love the manila folders for this because you can paint on it, you can glue on it, you can draw on it, you can do everything with these folders. And they're cheap. And then you just bind them. So give this a try and if you want to do this little guy, look in the description below. There's the link there for you. And uh, if you're going to do it, try and um, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you do. So I'll let you guys go. Give, thanks, uh, Janet. And um, we'll see you guys. Oh, actually, tomorrow, uh, members that are in the Blooming Artist, Tomorrow is our class at 1 o'clock Eastern, so um, there will be a link in the community tab for your group. So you'll have to link, go to that link for the, um, the live stream, because that's the only place you'll find it. So make sure you get your stuff ready. We're going to be doing a lot of um, stenciling lodging and painting tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow and have a fantastic day. Get creative, do some drawing, painting or something. It'll make you feel better. So have a great day everybody and we'll see you later.